Hey everyone and welcome to the Dead Horse podcast for this week with me are Rashi hi and Vivek hey guys and today we'll be talking about a bunch of games that we have been playing because it's the holiday season and all of us have actually played something this past yeah. week yes <laughs> not for yeah. me but i still managed to squeeze this <laughs> okay so okay let's start with Rashi uh, you've been playing far cry 4 okay? yes playing too much of it <laughs> okay what are your thoughts on it uh okay so the game is uh it's it's good when it comes to gameplay you know so you have this huge place which you can explore you can open uh, you can you know explore new surroundings you can locate new uh, places and stuff there's lots of stuff to do this time uh, which was missing in far cry 3 but essentially it's it's kind of like far cry 3 but just you know just open more this is just more stuff to do mm-hmm. and there's like a, a lot of hunting going on so too many animals around which you have to basically watch out for <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah the story story wise i haven't really progressed much but uh, story is still now it's kind of silly i have no idea what is going on and ha uh-huh. ha Do the NPC speak in Hindi? Oh yes, <laughs> there's just too. It's just too much fun. <laughs> okay. Like there's this, so I can speak Hindi Galis, right? That will be fine. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, so <laughs> the funny part speak was <laughs> the first time that I was playing it. Okay, so this eagle comes out of nowhere and this woman shouts, "Oi, bencho!" Eagle, and she empties an entire <laughs> clip onto the eagle. Her sons get fired. Yes, this game sounds amazing. Are they seriously? Uh, and like this one time, I was basically trying to be stealthy, and I sh- shot an arrow to this guy, and uh, it missed. Okay, because he moved out of the way. So, uh, like, oh, chutti, who was that? Oh, how many more? Who was that? Like this, and then they just keep on going. <laughs> Yeah. So it's music to the ears at times. Huh. That's your like how uh, like what's the frequency of the galis? Like is it just like every sentence has one? Or? Yes, every sent almost every sentence has one. Like, उनको बस कुछ भी दिख जाएगा. Oh, pencho, tiger, and then they're like running around all time. I love, I love that it's like it's not oh pencho chair, it's oh pencho tiger. Yeah. <laughs> Run for your lives. <laughs> yeah, that actually makes it like more funny for me at least. Uh, yeah. And it, actually, it's hilarious because the way they pronounce those words is like "pencho," oh. you know. It's like that. You don't say yeah, "pencho." Like, <laughs> it's the voice acting training, uh, which is like uh, yeah. ki, every word must be clear. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And even when uh, like there was this guy uh, who was speaking, so. अरे यार क्या कर रहे हो तो मैसेज करके तो इट इट फेल्ट स्लाइटली फेक टू मी बट इट्स ओके इट्स इट्स डूएबल इट्स फाइन इट इट सीम्स फनी इट्स इट्स रियली फनी टू लिसन टू देम या आई मीन आई गेस इट्स लाइक हार्ड फॉर यू नो वॉइस एक्टर्स टू सिमुलेट द टेरर ऑफ सीइंग अ टाइगर व्हाट्स रियली फनी इज दैट द टाइगर ओके सो इफ देयर इज अ टाइगर कमिंग टुवर्ड्स यू यू कैन किल हिम विद वन शॉट विद एन एरो टू द हेड हम But okay. if there's a honey badger around, oh my god, those guys just don't die. Three, <laughs> th- I shot four arrows into that honey badger, and he was still chasing me, and bite, he bit me twice. <laughs> <laughs> so honey badgers and eagles are like real bitches in the game. Uh, and there was this one time. Okay, so you have to really watch out for the wildlife because these people just attack. Okay, mm. so there was this one time I was sneaking around and. my position was given away because a honey badger found me sneaking around the bushes and he started chasing <laughs> me around <laughs> and this one time i was just walking around say i'm going and then suddenly i just heard some some noise and before i could turn around i got so badly hit it was basically a rhino charging towards me <laughs> <laughs> and rhinos chase your cars and they can deal a lot of damage yes yeah, a rhino so yep 
I haven't hunted elephants because, you know, they, they don't really do anything to you unless you attack them. So they're pretty helpful. In fact, it's really fun to like sit on top of an elephant and when the enemy card is like rushing towards you, you just rush towards them and the elephant just with his trunk throws the uh, mm-hmm. car or the jeep into midair and the guys go flying <laughs> down the cliff. <laughs> so again, gameplay is amazing okay it's beyond amazing but the storyline is like oh, okay whatever kya ho gaya hai how much how much room do you have to move around considering it all takes place in like a in the himalayas there is quite a lot i still i uh, thought that i thought there'd be a lot of edges from where you can fall off a lot aha uh-huh, there there are lots there, 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 there are lots of them yep. so how much how many planes do you have where it's just you can walk around a plane for a long time So what they they've done is that they've added this thing called grapple hooks. So you can basically uh, throw a grapple hook and then just climb uh, on mountains or descend from mountains or whatever. Okay. So like how they set it up? They set it up so that the the mountains are separate and then you have to come down from the mountains for the plane. Uh yeah, there are valleys, there are mountains. Okay. Uh, they even have those step farming thingies going around. So Okay. Like you know in Himachal Pradesh if you go you'll see a lot of step farming farming taking place so they have all that. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that. Mm. Is so is it is it based on India is it based on Nepal or Bhutan? Or... I know I, I guess it's a mixture of all the countries but mostly it's basic it seems more like Bhutan and Nepal and with the okay. Gandhi's it would probably Gali's be like Indian. Delhi. ियटेड This is this sounds about as bad as uh, you know Ar- Arvind you and I watched that video of the Dreamfall chapters Oh ha yeah the Dreamfall chapters oh yeah oh what the, yeah, yeah that was actually like at least in this it kind of makes sense in context in Dreamfall chapters it was like very weird it was like somebody like wrote the dialogue then somebody you know like you have motherfucker so you control f and then you replace it with like the appropriate guy it was just weird Yeah. Then uh the thing th- this thing that they've added in the story missions is that you can choose two sides uh, like one side the so there's basically Amita and there's Sabal so if you take the side of you have to eventually take the side of one person only so it depends if you take the side of Amita your your missions will be slightly different than if you had sided with Sabal so i heard that the endings are pretty different as well so, mm-hmm. so i don't know But I just met Pagan Win Min just once. It was in that cut scene which they showed in the trailer. Ah. Just more selfie leta na that selfie wala trailer silly thing. Ah okay. Hmm. Uh, I also I managed to play Quark. Oh, AJ Gale. Oh oh my god yes I had to ma- I had to say this as well oh my god so it's really irritating whenever you are walking around and people are like oh AJ how are you doing I mean it's not <laughs> AJ it's yeah it's AJ. <laughs> Yeah. Even the guy when he introduces, he's like, "I'm AJ Gal, uh, AJ Galay," and I'm like, "Okay, fine." कितना अंग्रेजी जाते हैं? Yeah, <laughs> if if somebody would say that, like people would call him Ajay Gali, like, <laughs> which might be appropriate for like Far Cry Four. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know, like I have never like heard the, of that surname. Maybe it's just like in Nepal or in that area. Like hey, Galay is a surname. Galay okay. is a Nepali surname. Ah. Uh, Hey, what's the surname? Yeah, I think I think it seems based more in Nepal. Yeah, yeah, it's, they have all those uh, Tibetan monks and you know those those uh, uh, Buddhist stuff going on. Uh, okay. There's lots of Buddhist chanting and uh, all those kind mm-hmm. of things happening. So I would say it's more based on you know Buddhist and Tibetan. Uh, I've also heard that this time the outposts are a lot more interesting. Like outposts, how are they? Are they indoor or outdoor? How are they? Ah, outdoor is it mostly, so. I okay. thought they were yeah. just like Far Cry Three, the but this time it. they've added this new person. So he's a hunter, okay, and so you can tag enemies if you look through your camera, okay. But this the hunter dudes you can't tag them, so you can tag them only for like three seconds or something before the tag disappears, and they can see you through if you're hiding into bushes. They can see you through the bushes, and 
if there are animals around like what i used to do in far cry you was i would just you know blow up in the cage and just sit back and watch the tiger or the bear or whatever uh, kill the yeah. other npcs right the enemies but this time if the hunter is around he'll basically you know uh, sort of mind control them the animals and then they listen to him only they won't attack soldiers but they'll attack you so then the, the tides kind of change Huh. Uh but they also if you were talking about indoors they have this thing called fortresses okay which are very well guarded so yeah those things are uh, inside a uh, huge fo- uh, a huge wall so you can't really throw bait around and expect a tiger or a wolf to show up and you know do most of your work that doesn't huh. happen okay those sound interesting those are all indoor yeah mm-hmm. those are indoors and they are quite tough because they have around 3 to 4 alarms so uh that's a huge problem you have to ensure that you uh, you know shut off as many alarms as possible before being spotted because this i've just li- managed to liberate one fortress and us maybe it took me around 5 to 6 tries because every time i would get uh, you know uh, like people would see me and uh, then choppers would come flying in and well you can't really do much then oh and they even have mortars in it so if a enemy comes and he can fire mortars at you <laughs> then you are fucked <laughs> <laughs> okay so so uh, just like i have a question like huh? how dangerous are honey badgers like are they actually stronger than tigers i told you <laughs> i put four uh no no no, no. i mean like in real life like uh okay oh acha so uh, i exactly don't know but i did manage to uh, but i did once see this video in which a honey badger was surrounded by four or five lions and he yeah. bit one in the nose and the others just ran off yep <laughs> no this is true huh yeah so, so they're they're vicious they're really yeah. vicious if they get angry they're pretty vicious and they stand their ground so you can't really help it hmm. so, so but they are lower on the food chain than Tigers, yeah right? because they're too small right so oh, a tiger okay. can kill him a tiger can kill it but ah still. okay ek tarike se they've added a lot of realism when it comes to animal interactions but yeah some things are pretty stupid like yeah like I, just yeah just yesterday i was walking and suddenly like five eagles just like attacked me <laughs> wait this happened to you in real life <laughs> no 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 i haven't seen an eagle like a jaipur like हाँ हाँ ओके सो इन फार क्राइ थ्री फोर सॉरी उसमें लाइक दिस बिन सो मेनी टाइम्स वेन आई एम जस्ट वॉकिंग एंड यू नो जस्ट माइंडिंग माई ओन बिजनेस एंड एन सडनली शॉर्ट कट सीन कैंड ऑफ थिंग प्लेस इन विच द ईगल बेसिकली ट्राइज टू सॉर्ट ऑफ नेचुर फाइटिंग इट अराउंड सो इट जस्ट कम्स ऑल ऑफ अडन यू इट डजेंट रियली गिव अ वॉर्निंग एज सच The only warning you'll you'll hear is, "Oh, mother, chod eagle, bhalo." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Then you run. <laughs> yeah. So overall, yeah, the, the plot isn't even worth mentioning. Like, like and mm, the gameplay no. is fun. <laughs> yeah, gameplay. But yeah, for no, yeah, for us, I guess it's worth it just for the language stuff. Yeah, I would say pick it up in a sale or something, or maybe get a PC retail copy uh, from Flipkart or something, which has a lower prices going on. Sixty mm. dollars is too much for it. Okay. But uh, uh, I also managed to play a co-op session today. So before the podcast, I was playing a co-op session with one of my friends. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Okay, yeah, that that's cool. Mm. Uh, So like speaking of co-op games I guess we can segue to Divinity Original Sin which I think uh, Vivek has also played with. Yeah I have I played like a 5 5 6 hours of it Okay Vivek what do you think of Divinity Original Sin I like it I think it's I think they they do a smart thing of uh, of having the narrative complement the gameplay like the the narrative isn't uh, like The narrative isn't a crutch on which the gameplay is leaning. Like it's not like everything hinges on the story in Divinity. It hinges on the really, really interesting encounters that the guys have designed and set up for you. And mm-hmm. the narrative is like a light-hearted yeah. thing that's going. The, the story actually, the closest I can think of is World of Warcraft, because that's what it reminds me. Like the dialogue is in World of Warcraft. The dialogue is kind of funny if you want to read it. 
But if you don't want to read it, just skip, click, accept, and you I get the quest. Have, like, I don't know. I, always, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm conscious of the fact that there are dozens of other people in the world. But I've always thought that the dialogue in World of Warcraft felt a little grandiose. It felt a little like you know you are the chosen one type. Where whereas this never felt that way. Yeah, I guess when WoW started, it was like that. But but sooner or later, they like nowadays most WoW dialogue is like the minor quests. They are just like they riff on some pop culture aspect or even reference something directly. Uh, like I can I can't remember exactly the name of the quest because they're all pretty forgettable. But I remember a few quests just straight up uh, like like referencing real world stuff or a Simpsons episode or something like that. So. So, like to me, at least, it's like that. Like the plot is enjoyable. It keeps you just interested enough so you can, and gives you just enough motivation so you can go and do the next encounter thing. I like the combat though. Like the the element stuff, which obviously every single person has praised yeah. to hell and hell and beyond. But but yeah, it is very fun. And uh, like the first three or four levels, I was just uh, I was playing it like an MMO. I was like, yeah, sure, it's okay, it's fun. But I'm just going yeah, and it, pressing abilities. It very, yeah, it seemed very by the numbers initially. Yeah, like you're just waiting for cooldowns to go away, and you're like, why does this single player game have cooldowns like that? But, but yeah, like after that, at level five or so, it suddenly becomes way more fun because at that time I was like, oh right, okay, so it so it works like this, and this element like fire reacts yeah. with poison. Like I learned that like later on. Initially, I wasn't aware of the. The thing, but one good thing that uh, reading all of the hype made me do is I picked an all mage party. So, mm. so, so I uh, because playing as a warrior in Divinity Original Sin is boring, and most of the time you don't want to play as a warrior because what you do is uh, like if there's an enemy, right? You uh, you spread lava all around his feet, so he's burning, and if the enemy moves, they it will do damage. But now your warrior can't go and attack them because your warrior will also burn in the lava. Okay. So, so in that regard, like I have like one warrior and three mages, and I'm already I'm at level ten at the moment, and I'm already feeling like this one warrior is a waste of time. Like should get another mage. Hmm. So it's a game that like being a mage is just so much better than like being a standard warrior. so yeah uh, and apart from that yeah like uh, yeah the 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 environment and the, the there are some puzzles and such which are great but yeah overall i guess it's yeah. just uh, they always make it a point that like no matter what area you go into there's always some sort of puzzle you're introduced to immediately that's not a very typical kind of puzzle like the first area you walk into there's a burning boat and you can choose whether or not to stop it from yeah. burning yeah I had a rain scroll, yeah, which I think like was not a coincidence because I had just one rain scroll. Then I yeah. used the rain scroll, and then like the ship, uh, like the people are uh, like lots of people are pouring buckets of water, but it's not working. So you get the hint hmm. that a small yeah. amount of water won't do anything. Yeah, and hmm. then you have a rain scroll, so you just press the rain scroll, and the rain happens, and hmm. so it's, it's good like that, yeah. Uh, Like there was this other RPG that I was playing, Wasteland Two, and it's just, it's very interesting. Like to to see the difference between the two. Uh, like yeah, Wasteland had it has a lot more involved plot, a lot more like grounded, sort of serious kind of feel. But yeah, but at the moment, like I like Divinity way better because Wasteland, like again, like it did the thing. You know, like we discussed this in our earlier podcast. The half of the game completely new sandbox. thing which which made me lose interest so and so i'm at that point in wasteland 2 where i'm like what the fuck i'm just in a new place i don't mm-hmm. care anymore and in this like i'm exploring all of these areas all each of them is interesting uh even though like uh like like usually you know like for me i place a lot of emphasis on narrative so even if like i'm not very impressed and i'm not like oh yeah narrative whatever but the combat each encounter is fun Mm-hmm. Like it's it's legitimately a game where each and every fight is fun, and that's a very tough thing to pull off. Yeah, it is a very very tough thing to do. They manage it quite well, like yeah. in Divinity. 
from the beginning i think i was engaged with the combat from the beginning even though the story or the world didn't really pull me in that much and that happened later like i think for me i think uh, the minute i got into the city i started really getting into mm. uh the the universe of divinity yeah uh like some i i'd say that in some cases like uh any quest that is not uh, like you know an environmental puzzle they they struggle in that because their world map system and such is not that good and a lot of them like i some there were two quests which i didn't know how i was supposed to solve and without reading a wiki so so yeah they definitely they definitely need to get better at that kind of stuff yeah sure yeah like they were uh, like the murder quest for example like some things in that are weird like uh, like if i'm playing a lawful character uh like though there is no such thing as lawful like you can just steal everything and nobody really cares so mm. like unless you steal them like right in front of their face then like you'll get minus 1 reputation or something yeah so <laughs> yeah, i remember this yeah. video in skyrim where he placed a bucket over the guy's head and stole everything he could yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah in this you can actually do the same thing you like what oh, you do okay. is one one person start talking to that guy Uh, so that guy will like it will be fixed in one place and will only look at your person and then you can switch to your other character and go behind this person pickpocket with all of this stuff <laughs> you can pull this one trick off with every single person in the game like mm-hmm. nothing doesn't matter <laughs> nobody will care so yeah it's it's yeah it is very uh, but but yeah that aspect doesn't even matter like I, that's why like i i can see why they went with the co-op angle because it's basically like a very fun mmo mm. you know like like the plot isn't really like very substantial oh yeah this reminds me actually i was playing this other game also from larian like divinity dragon commander which was a super interesting game definitely have you any of you like played it nope okay so So Dragon Commander is what what happens is you are a commander of an empire and you have to take back the empire because you know that's how the story goes. Hmm. So so at the start you uh so the gameplay is uh, you're on a ship at the start and uh you can uh, you have to do the total war map kind of thing uh, and then the battles are RTS the ba- the RTS aspect is very half baked like I didn't like that at all. but what makes it interesting is that uh you can do lot of uh like you have counselors from five races I, there are they are uh elves which are the standard you know like uh tree huggers environmental friendly thing though they are like too environmental friendly like they won't even like uh genetic modified modified crops this is a quest that actually happens in the game where like the elves want you to stop genetic modified thing despite like the war causing starvation etc so so all of these five factions are huge stereotypes uh and then there's the undead which are like super conservative religious people so you can guess what like stuff they represent so undead are like b- abolish all education except religious education mm. things like that and then there are the dwarves which are like hyper capitalist so so they'll do stuff like do you approve this project even though like there's a endangered species here or uh like they they have those uh you know the uh like one specific quest was that they were giving out loans and then once the loan was accepted they would raise their interest rate because of the fine print in the contract <laughs> so it's so the dwarves are just super hyper capitalist and then there's the lizards which uh lizards were actually like uh sort of very int- they were the like i was very my, all my policies were li- loved by the lizards so i was trying to be a reasonable person like okay genetic modified crops are fine but like otherwise like don't build dams where you know endangered species live so lizards were closest to that so they are in the game are portrayed as sort of logical people okay uh So so yeah lizards i guess were the middle species i don't know and the fifth one were imps which were like zero morality just science so <laughs> so so for example if the dam was there like the imp guy would say i don't know like uh flip a coin 
or build the dam, then I'll explode it if you don't like it later. So the imps were very weird because these other four fa factions were like clearly uh, like representing some real life thing. But then these imps were just like really strange. Wild card. Uh, not really wild card. They didn't even care about most of the things. Like the loan stuff, they didn't bother. They were like, yeah, whatever. They flip a coin. Like half of the stuff, they would be like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I don't care. Like, I don't mean flip a coin as in like the imp guy flips a coin and decides. The imp guy would say to me, I don't care. Just flip a coin and choose. So, so the imps would, like the only places where imps would not like stuff is like the undead guy. He comes up, comes up and says, like, I want you to introduce corporal punishment in all our, in all our classrooms. I'm like, what the fuck? So the imp guy in that says, no, it will harm education. So the, the only thing that their imps care about is like education and science and all that stuff. Huh. So, so you have these five and each after every turn in the battle map, the counselor would come to you and suggest something, one counselor. So they would suggest legislation like corporal punishment or building a dam or whatever. And you have to either vote yes or no. And depending on that, they react. So the reactions are very funny. Uh, like not not funny as in ha ha ha, but uh, you, I, I genuinely enjoyed. I was just smiling while seeing all of their reactions. They are very like well voice acted. Uh, it's a smart way to do world building. It's a very, very smart yeah. way to do world building. Yeah. And like you can also do this thing, like since you are the dragon commander, so each race is like uh, marry the representative of of us. So you can choose. So you, <laughs> so you can like marry the elf princess if you're boring and like just go for the usual option. Or like you can marry the dwarf princess. Like who, by the way, I suggest seriously Google like divinity, dragon commander, dwarf princess. Because I have not seen like such a hilarious Scottish accent in all of my life. Like, her dialogue <laughs> is so Scottish, it hurts. You know, like, <laughs> like she, like, she would, every single thing, she was like, oh no, I really like the, like, I, I can't even say it, because I'm not Scottish enough. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just hilarious. Like, just, just, just her dialogue. Uh, and then there's the undead princess, which is like, uh, it's, it's actually quite funny. Like, her questline is, Questline is not that interesting, but it's just funny, you know, undead princess, that sort of thing. And then, like, there's the lizard princess, who, like, I, I chose to marry, because she's actually a judge. So what you do is, like, you can suggest her, like, oh, yeah, do this, do that. So you can either make her, like, Judge Red, where she's, like, the law, right? Hmm. So, so like, if it's literally the, the same as the law, then, like, she, the morality won't matter. Or you can, like, try to make her, like, more... Uh, because lizards are portrayed as like in coldest, emotional less kind of beings, right? Mm. So you can try to like convince ki, okay, there is also the spirit of the law and there is the letter of the law. So that's the two thing kind of thing you can do. And yeah, so it's just like all of these elements, like none of them have the, any business being in the same game as each other. Like there are also the four generals, which are quite interesting. Like one of the generals is like, uh, like he's a lizard, but he acts like a, you know, racist Englishman who thinks he's better than everyone. Like, so he's basically like uh, a YouTuber, you know, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, so, <laughs> so this guy, uh, like you can either like force him to be more tolerant of people or you can like encourage him in this uh, racistness. This was actually one quest where I did a mistake because he came to me and he was like, I've been forced to attend this ceremony and it's, and I, you will be, I will be very bored and like, uh, and if I attend this, then I won't be available for the next turn. So I was like, yeah, sure. Okay. Take my ring and you can show that ring to, to say that, okay, no, don't waste my time basically. But then it turns out that this guy like took that ring and like punched the, the, the priest who was conducting it because the person wearing the king's ring has the diplomatic Im immunity. So, so now I had to handle that. The, the, like the the diplomats came to me and he was like, "What the fuck is your general doing?" He's like, so that's what makes it interesting. Like uh, some generals react to what your counselors are doing, and the, the counselors react to what the generals are doing. And there's the other guy who's just like you know 
typical drunk guy like not very interesting but like uh, later on you find out that his daughter like has been kidnapped hmm so till that point he's like oh, i don't like any of the other three generals fuck them i don't care i'm better than them like all four generals are kind of like that uh, so you can like send uh, two of your generals with him uh or you can like and force them to team up and later he learns that oh yeah those two saved my life so like i'm grateful and so on or you can just like send him away and like he'll get himself killed and yeah and you'll get the guy who the assassin who kills him will then become your general hmm. because he was actually doing all of that to get your attention so i guess i don't know it works don't ask me how that works but it it does uh, then there's the uh, the third general is like uh, like she's like she's a feminist basically but like a uh, like all of this stuff she suggests like first thing she comes to me and says like i want equal pay so i was like yeah sure why the hell not you know equal pay but then like less gold per turn and it's not that much like it's like minus 1 or 2 so i was like yeah sure whatever uh then she comes to me and says ki uh the second thing was that like uh more women in top positions i was like yeah sure why the hell not like you know like So yeah like I didn't find her that like objectionable like mm. only thing she does is like she like while she's suggesting this she'll say oh you are worthless you don't know anything like I'm better than you because she was like a queen before now she's a general so she's pissed off at you so like she, so she'll suggest reasonable stuff but she'll be like oh yeah I'm better than you fuck you whatever go away so I would say yeah okay fine yeah uh then the fourth person is just like a uh, like stereotypical like you know like tifa from final fantasy 4 no 7 yeah in some place like a lot of final fantasy fans just became un- angry for no reason but <laughs> but, but, but yeah uh, so she's basically like that and later on like you, if you find out you turn out that yeah, she's gay but so you can like either like say no my i don't care about that in my army it's like don't ask don't tell or you can like like may like be like oh yeah no i don't care you can like your secret is safe with me and then later on like so yeah it's like all of tell the whole world <laughs> no no you you don't tell the whole world like she will like write a nice article in a newspaper which will like get a lot of people to support like one thing which like she like, she will hate you for is like if you don't allow like uh, like people of the same sex to marry like this is a legislation that earlier the elf guy suggests So like all of the other races <laughs> were just like you know <laughs> yeah no so like all of the other races were making the elf jokes like oh elves like they want they want gay marriage they be fucking trees next am i right am i right you know oh god like, yeah so <laughs> that's pretty realistic <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so it's just like uh, most of these problems are actually like from the real world like so o- almost all of them have a analog in the real world so that's what made it interesting and and these characters are fun and just like being near them is fun so i hated the the tactical aspect and the rts aspect was like one of the worst rts is i've played at least but but hey like otherwise it's good like so yeah i do recommend you check it out like get it when it's like 10 dollars on sale it's definitely worth at least like 10 dollars but yeah do check it out because it's really fun like and what i love it for is that like all of these elements have no business being together but they work somehow in this game so so yeah that's that was divinity dragon commander which like even though it's less fun than original sin is a more interesting game than original sin if that makes any sense so yeah before i talk about other games i've been playing why not let's go over to vivek vivek you've been playing dungeons of the endless uh I've been playing Dungeon of the Endless for a while now. Uh it's a really really cool premise. Uh, you play uh you play uh, and and you can like there are multiple characters. You play you can play any of them, but they're on a prison ship and uh, the prison ship like has been attacked and uh, you are on an escape pod that lands on this planet. And uh, every like and uh, you have to get through the the like Whatever you land in this deep in this cavern, and there are the like, multiple levels in the cavern that you land in, and uh, it's a roguelike. So every time, every time you start the game, the levels will be auto-generated, 
it's got 12 floors that you have to go through as you work your way out of the place and it's really really interesting so it's uh, the setup is pretty simple like you have to you start off in an elevator and uh, the, the there's a crystal that powers that uh, that will power that entire floor in that elevator so you have to get your player characters to explore the area and find the exit once you find the exit you got to pick up the crystal and get to the exit and uh, as soon as you pick up the crystal waves of enemies start heading towards your uh starts head start heading towards you and so you have to place gun turrets everywhere so that the enemies die before they get to you or mm-hmm. at least they're damaged so that your player characters can kill them uh now you'll find enemies in rooms even before uh, the you lift up the crystal so like it's a it's a pretty interesting balancing act and uh, as soon as you start going up floors what starts happening is that your crystal keeps getting attacked mm-hmm. over time it's not safe it's not as if once you leave the crystal, like once you go exploring that no one will attack the crystal uh they slowly start attacking the crystal and the more they attack the crystal you lose power and you can't power rooms up and if you can't power rooms up you can't place tar- turrets in them so yeah it's a uh, it's a like it's a mix of uh, as you can see tower defense elements roguelike elements and some strategy elements it's really well done Hmm. Okay. Uh, any like anything interesting in particular? Like, uh, uh, like what are the moments that sort of stood out to you in the game? Okay. So the first, the first, uh, the first level. <laughs> this have this happened a bunch of times actually. Uh, I had almost like like I mean it it's also it's all about like you know those last second misses. That's what I really enjoy. You, I or I'd almost got into the elevator, but. Uh, I I went back to try and save one person who was cornered in a room filled with bots that were shooting at him and then I lost everyone died like I lost all three members of my party <laughs> and and stuff like that happens a lot like when you decide to try and save everyone you end up losing every like you end up losing every member of your party so it, like it it's it comes a battle of attrition and you have to make choices like okay fine who do I allow, let die now in this scenario you know and yeah that's what i find interesting about it okay that's what you yeah, have like i don't know have you have uh, arvin you've been playing one of the endless games we yeah. right i think you endless space yeah so endless space like uh, like i don't think it's very similar to endless based on what you no, said they're all mm. they're all different completely different games yeah. just the end brand name is on all of them yeah Yeah, which is funny because there was this other like similar brand name games also about space kind of that I was playing. So I'll compare and contrast them, I guess. Like oh, the game that oh, I'm talking oh, about is yes. like uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Civilization Beyond Earth and Endless Space. So like first of the bat, Endless Space is just like a space sim. So in that, like I guess it's an ad- like it's not really like a space, not a space sim, like a space forex. It's a forex. Yeah. Right? So yeah. so straight off the bat that's like I don't know it's more interesting to me because uh they like get something different right like from the like civ civ be which I was just playing before that then uh okay. the technology in this what it's how it works is that you can colonize certain so- solar systems and you can travel in between each of them using uh like at the start you can only travel using certain strings uh but later on you can uh, open up like just free form galaxy travel uh and the flavor text of the technologies is just so much better uh in endless space like uh like they actually like uh like there there are two crucial things one like if you just hover over them they'll tell you what like they'll give you the flavor text and in just like two or three lines it tells you like an entire story in itself like hmm. so so you just read those two three lines and you can visualize what this technology can do and uh how what's the story behind this technology like both of them so that's very good writing because yeah that's excellent writing if yeah. it can build a picture of a world for you in three lines that's in, mm-hmm. that's amazing yeah like and it does that for each technology like the tech tree is actually very similar to self beyond earth or rather i'd say because beyond earth came later like it borrowed a few points like it's the same free form tech 
which you can you know like you start at the center of the maze and then you mm. can uh you can either go down a specific path or just like like four technologies here then two technologies here stuff like that mm. so so that's really like, interesting interesting and uh, uh and one thing is just like like a lot of technologies are just so great like one technology is like you can terraform entire planets so like if you live on a a very a barren planet barren means no atmosphere nothing uh, mm-hmm. at the start your the people's happiness goes down because of that because nobody likes to live in a barren planet hmm. but later on you can make it a desert planet and then uh, no first you make it an arid planet which is like minor atmosphere then a desert planet and then from desert a uh, terran planet huh Hmm. so and you can, you first have to unlock so uh, like the basic level of terraforming is just uh you can convert first you go in the reverse direction so you, first you have to like if the first technology is let you ruin a planet so from terran you go to like worse planets but later on you can do that and like i'm just paraphrasing but like even like lava planets and barren planets have their own benefits like uh some some provide uh, like lava planets they provide a lot of bonuses for minerals and ga- gas giant planet provides a lot of bonuses for science okay so so there is a lot of so the, like it's not like you you have no reason to just like convert every planet to terraforming and the factions are super like again they do the same thing one paragraph but you get the whole picture of the factions so like there's this one faction called horatio horatio hmm. is a, was a very rich billionaire in his own dimension uh, in his own solar system sorry uh, but when he discovered space travel he discovered something uh, like a a beacon or something like you know like mass effect hmm. which hmm. gave him a vision that all the world should be horatio so so his mission is he has to colonize as many worlds as possible and fill them with horatio so for to do that like he has cloning technology so all of his units look exactly the same like horatio and all of his ships are exactly the same and so it's just hilarious like this there's just one guy like who just wants like you know to like fill the entire universe with himself because like horatio is perfect like according to his like bio so <laughs> <laughs> so so it's basically like a narcissist yeah uh and like and then there's the empire which is like the most uh it's the closest to what this game comes is like cliche like the empire is a soup, uh it's a loose federation of uh like technically the empire has a king but since a king cannot rule the entire galaxy the empire is a collection of uh various corporations who control every region so at at the same time it's like it's the closest to what our government is i guess you know state except the state governments are all corporations kind of mm. so and then there is uh then there is the crystals uh crystals are really interesting because imagine a civilization uh in civ because all of you guys have played civ so which don't have happiness don't care about money the only thing they care about is uh finding their origin the planet they originated on and activating the technology in the so so like all of the other races like they have money happiness the crystals like they are not organic so they don't have happiness they don't care they they just are uh they don't uh, they don't need money uh, because uh, money is actually called dust in this like it's a because because like the concept of money in space so dust is what it's actually a a very like rare mineral which is just called dust it's actually called something else so mm. they don't like dust because dust was what caused them to not be immortal like they were the crystals were immortal earlier but dust oh. leaked into their planet and suddenly like they they were they started getting corroded etc so they hate dust so they don't want money they don't have happiness but so and but at the same time since they don't have happiness they won't ever get unhappy so you can just like you don't have to uh, colonize like try to terraform like build happiness monuments etc research happiness technology for the, for them so 
so it's a very interesting twist on a game's own mechanics which is and uh, at least four or five factions are like that so so yeah like i'd say this is a very well designed game like i consider it probably like better than galsiv 2 which is like super high praise so so yeah like this that's another game you guys should check out like by now like it's like it it will usually go on sale for like 5 bucks or so you're talking about galsiv uh no like this game uh, endless space endless space mm. okay i'm saying like i liked it better than galsiv which is high praise ah, yeah. so So yeah, industry sounds definitely sounds much more intriguing because the aliens actually have a brain of their own and a purpose of their own that they kind of really don't in beyond earth. Yeah. Yeah, that was actually one th- like the factions are what really like sold this uh, sold me on this because factions in beyond earth are interchangeable doesn't really matter and like they annoy you every 5 turns. I'm, I'm really hoping yeah. that the aliens get their own factions in any expansion that we get for beyond earth. Yeah, the yeah. first thing like, like in Civ actually like this actually spoiled uh, Beyond Earth thing spoiled Civ for me because I realized there's no difference if I play Genghis Khan or this. <laughs> so <laughs> suddenly like it retroactively ruined Civ Five for me. But still like Civ Five has more personality just due to the virtue of like his human history. Yeah, yeah. So, human history and the the whole scope of human history and accomplishment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Civ yeah. essentially is a game about like. people saying you know look how great we are that's what the game is about yeah so look at what we have accomplished yeah. look at what we do when we put it pura head like to it and stuff like that yeah yeah so yeah, it's fun yeah it's fun yeah uh but yeah I, I, like i think beyond earth is fun is fun too i think i just think that like considering that sid meier's name is on it yeah, the expectation level is yeah. so high yeah. that even a good game is enough you ex- you yeah. expect Sins, right? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, a combination of like Sid Meier's name and then Civilization and then Alpha Centauri. So there was a ton of expectation <laughs> on this game. So yeah, which made it worse. Like yeah, I went into Endless Space not really expecting much. In fact, like I bought this because like I was like, huh, I don't have like I didn't have enough balance for Dungeon of the Endless, but I had it for this. So I was like, well, I, I'll probably buy all Endless games because. Amplitude is a studio that interests me. Like they make like mm. really good stuff. So I was like, sure, I'll I'll play Endless first. Then later on, I'll get one of the others. But but it turned out to actually be a really intriguing game. And I've seen if you don't have much expectation from something, you know, it basically really. I mean, it nicely surprises you. Know, uh, <laughs> I've, I've yeah. seen this. Yeah, I guess uh, like it's a. it's a double edged sword i guess because like sometimes uh. if you are uh, like because i had heard so much like about original sin mm. uh, i gave it time like i i like first 4 5 hours i wasn't that enthused but i gave it time and it turned out to be like much better okay. but, so i imagine if i had just like bought it like you know like 5 bucks or something i would be like yeah whatever 5 bucks wasted mm. i'll just play something <laughs> else which is a thing i've actually done for a lot of the games like which sometimes does make me feel like you know maybe if i've missed something mm. i was good later on but but yeah so it's a tough thing like sometimes if you're invested in something you will give give the thing time to get good mm. but as some so yeah it's yeah yeah i don't know like speaking of games for which you go in having very low expectations i've been playing call of war as gunslinger <laughs> And I played. I played all the Call of Duty games that have come out to date. I even played the Cartel. Whoa. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I like the first, like the first Call of Duty game that ever came out. I like that, and I like. I played one the second Power. one. Uh, the the Bound one they were Blood. like the there were the two brothers, and then there was the third the, brother. Yeah, and the third brother dies in the duel between them in the end. Yeah, and, yeah. Spoiler. Oh, it, is, but, <laughs> yeah. it, it doesn't really like. <laughs> no, it's very predictable that that is what's going to happen. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. Like, like you look that, at the that, innocent brother in the first frame, and you're like, "No way, this guy stays alive till the end of the story." <laughs> yeah, yeah. It basically ends with both the asshole brothers feeling really bad, that, <laughs> yeah. that, like repenting for their sins, basically. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that that was that was like a not a great story, but mm. they did a decent job with it. Yeah. I feel, I feel, you know. and uh, they like 
they've retained the the duels i don't know if you if you remember yeah. the founded blood the duels yeah like you know you have you face off against people mm. they do that in in um, gunslinger as well but the one thing that they do in gunslinger which they didn't do in the earlier call of war is that they, they tell a story that doesn't take itself too seriously mm. you know mm. and they tell a story with an unreliable na- narrator they use all the tricks that like like basically the guy the main character mm. is a guy called uh, Silas Green and he's mm-hmm. a famous bounty hunter mm. and uh, he's famous enough that there have been like you know these dime store penny novels are written about him mm. penny dread films like about his adventures and how he captures yeah. and kills mm. outlaws and so he's sitting in a bar and telling a bunch of people mm. about the about the adventures he's been on and like one of the people is a kid and that kid has read all his stories mm. So when he says something a kid uh, is in a bar what the fuck it's the wild west oh <laughs> like kid when i say kid i mean he's like around 15 16 years oh, okay old. so for the wild west that's old enough to be in a bar mm. uh so yeah, you know like i mean he's telling his story and mm. each each mission of the game is is like you know as one of the stories that he's telling and in between when he says something outrageous one of the people listening to his story will call him out on it and will like you know say okay fine that's bullshit you never did this because i i remember what actually remember reading what actually happened in the newspaper mm. and then he like he'll have to go back on his story and and change mm. the facts and you know like it's it's interesting the way that happens like for yeah. example like this moment wherein mm. he walks into this uh, uh, this place where he says like you know i was i was uh, i was ambushed by a bunch of indians hmm. and hmm. Uh, suddenly like one of the people goes like but you were fighting cowboys how come indians suddenly attacked you oh did i say i was ambushed by a bunch of indians i meant that the cowboys attacked me indian style no oh. <laughs> oh i thought like suddenly so when he said indians like somebody would be like oh bhanchud cowboy and then <laughs> yeah so <laughs> you know, you know, like it's it's if they do they they present the story smartly like otherwise not much has changed i think uh the 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 big difference is like you know the older call of war games the levels used to be really, really long like each level used to take an hour they shorten that down to around 10 to 15 minutes they have the they have these short levels that are snappy and that have relatively interesting scenarios in them i i think i'm almost two thirds through the game i have like the last third left mm-hmm. to go So yeah, it's been fun so far. I've, I've been pleasantly surprised by it. I was not expecting a Call of War as game to be good after I finished the Cartel, which was an irredeemable piece of crap. Hmm. Yeah, no, that's that's interesting. I guess more games in the future will like you know the recent Telltale Borderlands game is also yeah. doing the unreliable narrator thing. Because I guess yeah, like that's 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 the thing which a lot of games can do because you're obviously like you are the person who's doing that. Uh, so yeah it, it, yeah it is a thing which uh, it is a narrative device which has been underused but now hopefully yeah now we'll we'll like i mean we'll play around mm-hmm. with that and uh, hopefully we yeah. don't end up in a situation where we are tired of unreliable narrators yeah <laughs> i mean it's not like game industry usually like runs one good idea to death so i'm sure we won't <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's highly unlikely it's highly unlikely that we just take the same idea and make it again and again and again yeah. insanity oh <laughs> uh, so you know you guys have played a lot of co-op co-op games right yeah yeah okay so uh, what usually happens when you're you're in a game you invite your friend what happens well for the first time like usually the first thing happens is connection problems so <laughs> like first 20 minutes always like doesn't matter who First, you have to be like, okay, yeah, tera connect hua kya? No, Nahin. no, let's just Achha. forget okay. the connection. Thing. Okay. Like, yeah. The thing is, ki, um, yeah. what's mm-hmm. the procedure? Like, you say you start up a game, okay, and then you were like, okay, let's just play a co-op thing, and then you just mm-hmm. invite a, a friend, and he yeah. accepts, yeah. and he joins in, right? Mm-hmm. It's pretty yeah. seamless, hai na? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So the problem with Far Cry 4 is, or rather, you you be soft, you play whatever is. Mm-hmm. So. This happened to, uh, today uh, when I was playing with my friend. Uh, I I invited him to my game, and then the game uh, reloads. Okay, so a, a new uh, I don't know a new thing opens up, even it's though good. I'm in the same place, but it reloads, and then my friend joins in, 
and then when he disconnects like obviously connection problems which you were mentioning mm. so he disconnected got disconnected rather and again the game uh, reloads and then again and it takes a long while to like reload or oh. whatever it was so irritating because usually this thing should be seamless right there shouldn't be a problem if okay if the person is not joined and it's okay if the person is joining and it's fine why do i have to see a why do i have to get a reload every time yeah it should be a drop in drop out co op ha i don't know why it reloads every time it it's loading a new instance of the world mm. in my guess yeah it's loading a completely different world which is set up just for co op yeah mm. but, because what i've heard is that if you play a co op mission with someone that mission doesn't advance for either of you in the campaign you're playing single player hmm that's weird because somebody like i like just offhand comment was like you should just play co op to get like one person does one mission one person does other mission like easier farming for the for the you know that the tons of it. ubisoft missions that are doesn't like come. don't you don't unlock those missions you don't finish those missions in your single player from hmm. what i've heard well that's weird because like i i can't imagine how that would work. like would you do one co-op session you're like oh yeah that was three good hours of co-op stuff then then tomorrow you load and then you're like wait i have to just do all of that stuff again oh i like, shall confirm this with my friend uh yeah <laughs> yeah because that just that just feels like the worst <laughs> thing to do yeah i oh, actually maybe it is just for the person who joined yeah that 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 is understand like okay host and the join person so maybe like yeah, for the join person yeah i think the host person, host yeah. commission unlock ho jata hai but jo join karta hai uska kuch nahi hota yeah that's that's probable yeah because like if if i were the host i would be like this i was like i just have to do all of these missions now without the fun of the added partner so like i hope that's the case because otherwise it'll be totally <laughs> silly I mean, एक तो वैसे इतना गुस्सा आ जाएगा वो पूरा टाइम रिलोड होता रहेगा ओके फ्रेंड इज ज्वाइनिंग एंड सडनली द गेम रिलोड लाइक वॉट द हेल इज गोइंग ऑन वो इतना टाइम लेता है कि इट गेट्स रियली रियली फ्रस्ट्रेटिंग एट टाइम्स especially if the whole on and off thing keeps happening like it was uh, initially for us when we were playing it so every time you know it would keep mm-hmm. dropping connections and my friend would keep on getting disconnected all the time it was frustrating mm. <laughs> hmm. yeah we are well, I'm sure they had no other solution. I mean, Ubisoft usually like puts a lot of time and effort before releasing well, a game. Like my point is that okay, so if you want to put a co-op thing, uh, so keep it totally separate from the game. For years of seamless integration, so this seamless to वैसे भी नहीं हो. Like don't do this, right? Yeah. It just it just gives a very bad impression and a very bad experience in my opinion. And my yeah. friend was like, oh, they'll solve resolve this in the next Ubisoft uh, in the next Far Cry uh, game, and I'm like, sure. I don't want to wait that. They should resolve this in a patch, man. I know. They shouldn't wait yeah. for the next yeah. Far Cry game. That's not acceptable. Mm. Yeah, especially since like all of their recent games are like play co-op, play with friends, like. Yeah, the, all the recent games are co-op heavy. All the recent games are like their biggest. Like, I don't know what the lo- what made them think that it's a smart idea to release the biggest titles you've been working on back to back in the same month <laughs> of a pretty crowded year. Yeah. You know? Uh, the games now pretty much just have the same target audience. Like it's like Ubisoft game A, Ubisoft game B. So yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, speaking of which, like just uh, this, should we do like a series of game of the year podcast where we discuss what our favorite uh, games of this year? Like I don't know. Like we we should do one podcast where all of us come in and game of the year. Yeah, like, not everyone, a series. Everyone, yeah. Like, all four of us sit down and decide what the Like let maybe make a top ten Dead Horse podcast list. Hmm. Okay, yeah, sure. Top ten is we fun. Yeah, we can do that. that yeah. This year, all of us together. Yeah, sure. We can do that. Yeah. Like we can start an email kind of thing. But... Yeah. We should do something like that. Yeah. Because then there there'll be a lot of fighting <laughs> to to get ten. Nah, games nah. We we'll, no like since we are four people, we'll just be like okay, every person gets two, and then two are like wild card entries. So. That that's that that that's better, I guess. Every po- no no no. Are there there will be good argument if we set it up so that like <laughs> let's let's just let's just everybody let's everybody just put in the games that we love and we'll start cutting one by one. <laughs> <laughs> wait wait, who does the cutting? Because that that person is the one who's. No no, we 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 cut one by one. Also. Oh okay. <laughs> What is this? What is this? Yeah, that that sounds like a very like. sort of like a reality show kind of format. Rotis ka cutting kalai bhi hota hai boss. 
ஆமா <laughs> So I think that's because GTA doesn't do the annualized franchise yeah. nonsense. They take 5 years. Yeah. And yes, it is it's becoming stale in a tonal sense, mm. but they they do try new things with every game that they put out. Yeah. You know. Like I think if they change the tone and they try something new in terms of like yeah. the, the story that they're I, trying I do to think that like uh, they don't try enough new things. Like they they try yeah. exactly one new thing each time. Yeah. I so, agree. so that's not enough like in a like especially in video games where you know like uh things move very fast like just a couple of years back like assassin's creed brotherhood was i don't know was maybe it was before than that, i don't know but yeah like just 3 or 4 years back brotherhood was there and everyone's like oh my god where is assassin's creed going to go from here hmm. and then like suddenly they just like completely yeah, they, and then everything they, changed <laughs> they've just fallen off a cliff since then like everyone yeah. thought for a while that assassin's creed has figured out how to annualize a video game franchise and not run it into the ground mm-hmm. you know when brother came out yeah and i mean then... i don't i don't like nobody was exactly like hailing it as like like how do it has fixed annualize but like people were genuinely interested they were like oh my god when's where is the next assassin's creed going to be and what are they going to do with it so and you yeah. know what like the saddest thing about that was the next assassin creed was in an interesting location constantinople mm. but they like they made it so stupid yeah and look like i don't think like that was needed because ultimately while constantinople is very interesting like they basically recycled some of like assassin creed one like the city itself wasn't different it was like like the city from assassin creed 2 but with a, a constantinople skin on it yeah hmm. so so that was uh but yeah anyway like hey. gta stuff aside uh, <laughs> wow you yeah. know what us then yeah. a couple of days back i was just uh, listening to our podcast so you know random episodes i was just clicking on and i i must have like heard around four five episodes on sab mein humne assassin's creed ki itni buri mari ki was it's like we totally yes. hate see, the see the weird thing is like It's not that like we hate the game. Hmm. They've been some really good Assassin's yeah. Creed games. Hmm. Just that they've been yeah. executed poorly or something. I mean it's hmm. it's the same way we we shit on Thief. Like you know it's yeah. not that we hate Thief. It's not even that we hate the yeah. new Thief. Yeah. Like you are it's just, just that it's hmm. so disappointing that they made some basic mistakes that have taken away from hmm. what would have been a good game. Yeah. yeah. I mean you are more harsh on the things you love, you know? Like Of course. It's Pretty like much. that. Yeah. and like assassin's creed at least for me like and i imagine for a, for all of us is like we all of us probably loved prince of persia and oh. then this was the spiritual sequel and and the earlier like the first assassin's creed i still think was a great uh like idea and like and a template to move forward but then slowly like they started removing the stuff that like i liked from the game and like putting in all of those like get five ingredients and do five of that and so that was and like they still haven't delivered uh like on the assassination part of the game <laughs> you know yeah the yeah. stealth stealth of the game yeah. which initially seemed promising yeah. in 1 and 2 has kind of died completely and it's become this mm. open world game where you collect shit now mm. yeah uh, or hunt and that's sad to me yeah, like I mean, I mean assassin is like the name it's right there in the, the name the initial premise was so cool where you yeah. play an assassin in the old world and you will find new and interesting and like devious ways to assassinate people yeah. in like the past hmm. yeah yeah the first yeah, one actually did it was pretty did. exciting hmm. because i uh, hmm. i am a huge fan of the second game and it was based in italy so the other day like my parents were watching a documentary which was based on it- mm. italy and i'm like whoa this is where i climbed i climbed this entire church and i went up there and then i murdered this guy and i did this and my parents were like wow what the hell is wrong with you you know but <laughs> it was a nice 
I mean, it was it was a nice experience yeah. to like see this and remember that. Okay, this is what I was doing. I was I was crawling over here. I was sneaking around that mm-hmm. side and killing the guard there and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I I think I think it it, it gave me a lot of form fond memories. But none yeah. of the other Assassin's Creed games managed to do that to me. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think the one thing I'm hoping for from this generation is that we start like really seeing new IPs because. I think the one place the last generation was a little disappointing is that there weren't enough new IPs. Yeah, it was a lot of it was a lot of stuff that uh, that like came back on from the the previous generation. You know? Yeah, there was a lot of like hyper conservatism in that. Okay, yeah. this is what sells, so we'll make exactly this yeah. and nothing else. Which oh, no. like I mean when like I mean when a, when an industry makes Hollywood looks like it it's outright risk taking and. You know, like that. That's a serious cause for concern mm. because it is. Yeah, it is. It absolutely is. I'm really hoping that uh, we start seeing some, like we start seeing the major publishers take some risks with IP mm. because I think Sony's, like I mean, Sony has blood and uh, the order along with like a couple of other exclusives. Mm. There are new IPs, but mm. there's not any like the. You're not seeing that much investment in just completely new ideas that the companies are trying to build as new brands. Because, you know, when Xbox and Sony originally launched, like, last generation, 360 had Gears of War Mm. as its new, like, brand ambassador game. Mm. And Sony had Lair as its brand ambassador game. Mm. Yeah, Lair has (laughs) failed that deep. And Gears of War, we're getting a part four now. Hmm. But this time, I, I don't think we're seeing those kind of brand ambassador type titles for the consoles that say, you know, I'm, I'm like, this is a new idea. This is what this console is going to be about. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. Sony, like, I, I imagine Sony actually, like, it's, it's concerning when you know, like, you are like indie titles are just expected to pick up the slack from, like, it's like now it's just accepted that oh yeah, the corporates will just make the same game. But hey, look at all these independent developers. No, like on one hand, like I like it because you know indie developers they come up with great ideas. So that's that part's it, part is good. But some like for some ideas at least you you like you tend to need like a larger budget, right? Because you want yeah, like and, and the bigger scope ideas should you know they want to lead from the front there. Yeah. And and like it, it's it also has a kind of effect on the overall image of games because these semi titles are what get the marketing that's what the general public thinks games are so when yeah. so like pretty much from 2007 seven till now most people when you say game they'll probably say call of duty which <laughs> which is kind of concerning or, you know if or, or fifa mm. yeah Ugh. so yeah it is concerning when you have like you know the same titles just again and again and like even the titles that had kind of promise like you know assassin's creed and such it's just yeah, yeah they just watchdogs man the biggest disappointment <laughs> oh my god yeah <laughs> no, watchdogs actually watch you know like uh i think it was it has been a down downhill climb since the first trailer they showed pretty yeah. much the first trailer that they yeah. showed had me really excited for that damn yeah. game and ever since then it's been like oh my guns 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 yeah. guns, guns. Yeah. Like, why get... why does this game need guns yeah. this game doesn't need guns. yeah and it's like a game which actually has a legitimate like reason to not have guns at all hmm. you're a hacker like so oh and my god the protagonist be... is like so boring <laughs> yeah yeah they I hope this generation doesn't like, uh, you know, like devolve into a competition between generic protagonists, <laughs> Italian oh, versus Adian players, <laughs> and versus I don't know who's the protagonist for this Unity versus the what do you call uh, the next one, Assassin's Creed. Name, what's the name of the Unity protagonist? Name is Arno. AR. Arno. Oh yeah, Arno. Ah, Arno. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, like it's just. Le- it's just like nobody even like wants to think of a protagonist that's slightly different in fear of maybe this is what makes our game tick. Maybe this is why we have sales. Actually, yeah. interesting news on that front. Like yeah. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt recently announced that Geralt is not the only playable character. 
for the Witcher 3. Uh, you're going to be play, able to play as uh, probably one of one of two female characters, Siri or Yennefer, in The Witcher Three: The Wild okay. Hunt. But how yeah. will they like uh, like? Okay, yeah, we. I guess I'll find out when no, the no, game they, comes out. They have completely different storylines from Jared. Ah, okay. So it is like you look at the world through their eyes. Hmm. Whoa! Yeah. There's like just two months left. <laughs> Oh, no, they just coming out that soon, like February. February. Oh. February twenty fourth. Oh, for some reason I thought. Oh, for some reason I thought it it was coming out like later, like in the no, year. So now I, I mean, guess no, good. please. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I could take another. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Thing. Oh my god. Nice. Yeah. Oh my god. I can just imagine like first seventy five percent gameplay, Geralt, then suddenly it turns out animals. And you were Yennefer oh, all along, off, and then what the fuck is wrong? <laughs> yeah, and then in the cutscene, no. just like the like a guy from Ubisoft shows up. Stop talking. Yeah. Now it's like too too good to not happen. Like I'd say this. <laughs> but but yeah. Uh, otherwise, yeah. I hope even with The Witcher, like I hope CD Projekt, like the cyberpunk thing that they're doing, ends up being yeah. good because. Even like Witcher is good and all that, but like I want CD Projekt to also like you know do something new, do new stuff. Yeah, you know, and and I, like I was really happy when they announced Cyberpunk because it's a big departure from what they've been doing so far. They didn't pick another fantasy thing. Yeah, they went they went in another direction, and that's interesting yeah. to me. You know, I hope mechanically it's also different. Like it's not just ends up being you know Witcher with a like Cyberpunk thing going on. Yeah, Witcher, but with guns is not yeah. what I want to see them do there. Like I want a more Tactical kind of combat, I suppose, is what mm-hmm. I'm lo- is what I'm looking for from I it. I never like playing with guns in any case. I mean, I always like to play mm-hmm. either with with a bow and arrow, and you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that's just, really interesting. It's just yeah. too too easy with a gun. Just aim at the head, shoot, and the person's yeah. dead. You know, yeah. it's I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess I, for me, I guess I just don't like the sound of guns. So whenever oh, I, you know, like yeah. I'm shooting a gun, it's like bam, 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 and I'm like, oh, what the hell. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah. So that like I usually prefer tactical games where I'm like you know like like calmly making decisions and then like not really hurrying. So if there's a and decision, then someone else shoots the gun for you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> You're the boss. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like it's like and there's nothing wrong with either approach. Sure. Like you like it's it's okay. But yeah, like I want like the industry to just not overwhelmingly rely on just the guns aspect. Try to like, uh, yeah, out. I think I think that is I think that is changing. You know, like to their credit, this this generation seems to be less about like they're moving away from that and they're moving more towards the the co-op aspect and the shared world aspect. Like I think last last generation, everyone was trying to cash in on the MMO, and this generation, everyone's trying to cash in on the shared world idea. So it's not as much about shooting stuff as it is about exploring, like a interesting space with your friends hmm. yeah I, you know? I think minecraft is probably what like has yeah. a kind of influence and on to that the, to the point where like games like destiny uh hmm. have large levels in which you spend like 20 20 like 20 percent of your time solving a puzzle hmm. <laughs> you know yeah and that's that's a big big departure for someone like Bungie, where you spend time actually hmm. solving a puzzle in a like a co-op kind of environment hmm. yep i hope there are a lot more turn-based tactical games like that that's especially one genre I want well more of that. Like, pillars of eternity and uh, yeah numenera coming out yeah. so i've already like bought both of them and i'm keeping up with them so yeah, i hope both of them are like as exciting as like i was pretty excited by wasteland 2 and original sin i hope both of them also managed to deliver torment especially because uh like considering this is sort of like a you know like dream project basically yeah. so i hope that ends up delivering i don't know if yeah I, yeah numenera i hope is really really good that's yeah. what i'm hoping it has for. a really uh, interesting think, setting too so i think pillars of eternity is going to be good because mm. i mean it's got it's got the man you know yeah pillars on one hand like i guess it's just uh it's not doing anything new as such but it's hoping to be like a sort of call to form so hope like even though I'm excited, yeah, but hopefully they go on to more unconventional stuff from there. So 
Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's just like, you know, it's it's Chris Avalon starting the engine of the car. Uh, yeah, and not just they, like, it's not, ma- it's not mostly him though, right? It's the, But yeah, like he's on the project, so that's good. But yeah, it's yeah. him, it's Fergus Urquhart, it's the core team yeah. behind uh, Obsidian. It's yeah, behind hopefully it. like Obsidian at least. And like one thing which I do want is Obsidian to get the, you know, initial buggy reputation out of the way. Yeah, that and I hope that like this leads to them to figure out a way to do Alpha Protocol 2 without calling it that. Yeah. <laughs> they can call it the beta uh, instruction or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And I'm fine with they just call it beta protocol. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I mean, Sega's lawyers would probably care, but... Beta protocol, gamma protocol, beta yeah. protocol. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah, like... Uh... But yeah, the the concept of a modern day kind of thing that was exciting, yeah, and and yeah, like whoever like did you see the thing where like Square Enix decided it was the year nineteen ninety, and did a engine demo with just like one screenshot, <laughs> like did you guys see that? <laughs> no, I did not actually. So so Square Enix were like, oh yeah, remember that Deus Ex shared universe thing which we were making? And, oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. They they sent that they sent a screenshot of it. Yeah, and every, like in this day and age, like what does a screenshot tell you about an engine? Like absolutely nothing. It's like yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, Square Enix, hey, yeah, they don't give a fuck. Yeah, I hope they like they don't like focus on the shared aspect too much and like actually make a good Deus Ex game. Because that's like a very tough thing to do. Um, okay, what the hell? What? Uh, okay, guys. Sony is doing a press conference right now. It's called the PlayStation Experience. Can any of you tell me what the flag, which country the flag in the middle is from? I don't know. This Sony Where? buy a new country? Huh. Because it's Japan and it's America. But what's, what's the flag in the middle? It's not India. Yeah, it's not India. Like, but, but it, it looks, looks like India. Yeah, it looks like just the central portion is not like India. Otherwise, even the no, no, there is a Gila. there is a flag, I think. But it's opposite. Hota, jaise hamara orange, yellow, green. Hota, green, orange, mm. green, green, white. Yeah. Wow, what did I just say? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah like no, no there <laughs> is a flag. Yeah. Like, yeah, like the orange is down and the green is up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck this is. Yeah, like. Google, Google. Oh, no, I can't find anything online either that is that similar to the Indian flag. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they just didn't know what the Indian flag was. So they just like made a guess. Got the Final Fantasy designer to no, draw a maybe flag. Maybe they just wanted to troll <laughs> with everybody. So they're like, okay, ab yep. guess karo kya hai ye. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That definitely looks like an Indian flag. Uh, there is no other country with a similar scheme. There's no country with, with that has the blue chakra in the middle. Yeah, yeah. And even they, they do have that uh, the same color scheme. Did they just take it's... the Indian flag and put a face in the middle of the chakra? <laughs> yeah, like it's. So... I don't know what it is, but yeah, it's either a very ridiculous hack job or somebody is so ignorant and they couldn't even Google. Like, or or maybe it's like a game where that's a flag of a country inside. I don't know. Yeah, or maybe don't... it's maybe... Far Cry. Five. Oh, you know, you know what it could be. It could be that they're yeah. showing the flags of characters from Street Fighter, and that is like Dhalsim is from that version of India where we went with that flag. Yeah. So in India, where nobody had any taste whatsoever. I don't know. It's possible. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is, but yeah. Yeah, Sony. What the hell? The last time they had any idea what they did was, I don't know. Like when. Apparently, the press conference is pretty good from what I'm seeing on Twitter. Mm. Yeah, I, I guess, thing. yeah, like, to just, like, avoid the kind of thing, I'm just, like, no, I don't bother with these press conferences anymore because nothing in these conferences ever, like, translates to what the actual game ends up being. So. Whoa. Huh. Broken it's, Age is coming it, to Vita. Yes. They just announced a... Uh, a PS4 exclusive title called What Remains of Edith Finch. Wait, what? Yeah. What happened? No, I didn't uh, get the title. What Remains of Edith Finch. Who? Eden Finch. Who's Eden Finch? Exactly. That's the, name of the <laughs> character in yeah, the game. The game's title is that. Oh, right. 
God damn it, <laughs> Uncharted 4 ka gameplay trailer. Yeah, what the hell is this? Like, <laughs> what's this school of game design? Like, it's like the vanishing of Ethan Carter. Like, what? How, how the fuck do I know who Ethan Carter is? Like, Abhi to game khelo na hamara. Jaanne ke liye. Jaanne ke liye Bollywood. Yeah. Should we call it? Are we done? Yeah, I think we're done pretty yes, much. Yes, we're done. <laughs> I want to watch that trailer. We're supposed to make noises about GTA 5 being... Uh, like target deciding to pull GTA 5 but whatever next, target next podcast <laughs> yeah I mean <laughs> like target. ultimately like it's a decision target have done to avoid the I guess yeah. they looked at the petition and they were like well this is gonna cost us something so they yeah after we're a family brand yeah. let's stay a family brand I yeah. guess whatever it's fine so that's why they that's pulled the one game. game that was causing the the ruckus not any other games yeah. what I think we need to do like as an industry is to kind of Get out the idea that you know execution not... complex basically. Get out of the Jack Thompson moment. It's, it's that, and it's also to kind of get the idea out that this is not like I mean, a the concerns about GTA Five in that petition are are not necessarily true, and b the idea that that is not what all video games are. You know, it's a, it's very mm-hmm. very silly to assume that like video games train people to beat like go and beat other people up that's that's not what they're there for and there's no evidence that says that that's what they're there for anyway like this, this is a heavy discussion yeah we should end on a on a on a kind of happy note because it's today's yeah. Tejas's birthday <laughs> yeah so, oh, yeah so i was actually like uh reading twitter like the, the reactions and one guy was like the order was actually started in 1884 and they just kept missing their deadlines because that's how uninspiring it looks so, so yeah. yeah, I mean it is like based on what I've seen. Like yeah, I don't even know why that game exists. It's like Gears of War, but hey, guess what? There's a lot of cutscenes in there. Whoa, whoa, radical. So I don't know. Like, and like even the setting. Like I can already see that Dishonored did the setting better. So I don't know. Maybe, but maybe the end game will change my mind. I don't know. I mean. They seem to have paid a lot of attention to the single player campaign. They don't have any multiplayer, it's single mm. player only. Yeah. Yeah, it so that's good, really yeah. Good. Hopefully <laughs> But yeah, who am I kidding? It's not like executives have already decided that single player is dead. All games must have must have co op now. So Yeah, uh, who knows? I mean I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with that game mm. because it's like it's one of the few Single player only exclusives for PS4, you know. Mm. And Ready at Dawn has had a good track record with the God of War stuff they did for PSP. Mm. So let's see if they can make the transition to the big screen. It's been delayed a lot. This game has been delayed a lot. Yeah. <laughs> let's see. Let's see if it's good. Mm. Uh, yeah. It comes out around the same time as The Witcher 3, so I'm. So yeah, good luck with the sales, <laughs> guys. Yeah. <laughs> Should be fun to see. How, like I mean, they're different genres, mm. so whatever. But yeah, yeah it should be fun to see how that goes. Mm. All right. Uh, oh. Yeah, I, I guess we're calling it right. Mm. Yeah, that was the Dead Horse podcast for this week. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.